Hello, welcome to Science in a Cup. So I have these two lasers which are bought, uh, bought from Amazon. So the problem with this cheap Chinese laser is that the optical power which is written at the body of the laser is something which you cannot depend on. So normally uh, what we do uh, in our institute is we have something called thermopile sensor or uh, it is uh, more known as a laser, uh, laser power monitor. So we just take the laser and measure the power. Now, during this lockdown, I cannot access my institute lab, but I wanted to do a study like uh, this diode laser actually produces some heat. So as the temperature of the diode rises, its optical power output actually reduces. So how much it reduces over a time and how much battery, uh, with how much uh, power consumption it is doing and its optical power output, how much it is reducing, I just want to measure roughly. So uh, I have this both lasers like this is of uh, they say it is of uh, high power uh, as I measure it in the lab it is uh, say that it is around 100 milliwatt and uh, there is this another laser which is of low power. So these lasers are actually diode lasers so there is a 808 nanometer diode which is then converted using crystals to 1064 and using uh, nonlinear optics this 1064 nanometer wavelength is converted back down to 532 nanometer so uh, so coming back to this sensor like we use a thermopile sensor that is okay so thermopile sensor like uh, acquired from Edmund optics or Thor labs so how why uh, so the question which comes into the mind uh, like uh, why can't I use any uh, like photodiode, LDR or any sensor which is like uh, which can sense light. So normally what happens is that it is not that you cannot do it but you can but normally uh, these sensors like uh, photodiode is optimized for a particular wavelength or a narrow range of wavelength. But this thermopile sensor is not not like that. So what happens is like uh, in a thumb, uh, so we all know like when a laser or uh, when light hits a surface, if the surface absorbs that light, it gets heated up. So th what this thermopile sensor does is like it, it detects what is the change in temperature of that surface. So the question comes then what is a thermopile sensor? Thermopile sensor is actually collection of thermocouples. Now question comes what is a thermocouple? Thermocouple is actually two different metals which are joined and when there is a hot end and the cold end so when there is a difference of temperature between the hot end and the cold end a small amount of voltage is generated so collection of thermocouples is called thermopile so today we'll try to uh, so right now I don't have this thermocouples and this thermocouple also thermopile also so what we will do is that we'll, uh, I, what I have is with me is a solar cell and a, a solar cell acquired from calculator and also a normal solar cell. So this actually these calculators are uh, means like uh, they actually got broken and I just kept it and thought that I would use it someday. So I got the small solar cell which is used to charge the battery of the calculator from it. The question comes why a solar cell? because a uh, solar cell actually uh, is uh, sensitive in the visible region so and because my 532 nanometer which is green is in a visible range i am using it so when light will shine on this solar cell it will generate a electricity so i will just plot uh, plot the amount of electricity produced by that solar cell versus time and that will give my result so this is actually the box. I have taken a simple cardboard box. Here I have placed a lens. Details of the lens I will tell, uh, tell later. And here is my solar cell which I took out from a calculator. So right now this is the whole thing. So what happens is that when light comes from the, if I shine the light on uh, suppose on these lenses and you can see it falls on top of the solar cell. I'll just check if uh, it's getting saturated so I'll just do it with a small laser so it falls on the solar cell so when the light falls on this tiny solar cell 
so it generates a voltage and that voltage I am measuring so other type if you have don't have this calculator solar cell you can just go to a market and order this type of solar cell that will also work or uh, or you can order solar cells from the Amazon so I have uh, so it's recording once again so I have written a small code in Arduino and then I just plot the graph uh, see the graph in this my laptop so I'll just go open my serial monitor serial plotter and so I have just kept the delay for uh, one second so uh, so uh, so uh, sorry each one millisecond so after each one millisecond it will take a reading and will show here so right now what I will do is that I will just close the box and then I will just measure the optical power of the laser so just close the box I just need to do it with one hand so it's a little bit of trouble so as you can see uh, after I close the box if I just refresh I don't know if you can see so this 4 is the background light or the background noise which I am facing so curve is also here so what I will do is that I will just take my laser and then you can see if I just move the light the, car, uh, the graph disappears curve the graph disappears So what this? Uh, so I'll just explain the code. So what the code does is uh, code does is that it actually records what is the highest uh, highest optical power. So uh, normally, like suppose I have this this lasers, which is quite a lot powerful than uh, this small laser. So when I just uh, so uh, right now, if I ca if you can see, when I will just. So I'll just again refresh it. When you just refresh, it is the background, uh, background, uh, background noise which comes into play. And then uh, what I will use is like I just put, let it focus. Six forty nine. So for the large one, the reading is six forty nine. And uh, now what will what I will do is that I'll see the reading of this small one. So I'll just again press the refresh button. It will go to its uh, below power. And now what I will do is I'll use the small one. 530. 521, 22. Yeah. That's it. So the, this is one type of way using the lens. There is also another type of way in which one can use not the lens but actually a diffuser. So what uh, what is a diffuser? Diffuser is that it will spread the light. I just need so as you can see the light is getting spread spread. So this is a small diffuser. So why do I need to spread the light? That is because if my laser laser is concentrated over the photodiode directly then my photodiode make uh, sorry uh, the solar cell directly if the laser is concentrated over the solar cell directly then my solar cell can get ruined or burned in a particular place hence i either need a lens or a diffuser to diffuse that part of the light so uh, so normally there are two ways to do this one is like using a lens or another thing is like using a diffuser so uh, uh, so suppose if you see that the optical power output of the or you can use a combination of lens and diffuser also normally if you see that the uh, optical power output of the laser is very high then you can use a lens plus a diffuser if you see if the optical power output of the lens uh, of the laser is low uh, then you can use only the lens little bit high a diffuser will do so normally what happens like i said previously uh, we cannot just shine the laser directly into any photodiode or any solar cell or LDR because there is a chance of burning the sensor because uh, like sensor detects because it absorbs the light if it absorbs very much then it will reach over its saturation level and because of the energy of the laser uh, laser beam then it can get burned so 
it is better to spread the light and uh, because it is happening for every laser beam that you are using every laser power beam means laser uh, laser beam of different powers so uh, it will really not matter whether uh, so how much it is diverging because you will get a standard fixed standard so normally actually uh, we uh, so the lens i showed you how i got is that i just took a led normal led so uh, yes coming back so what i do normally is that i have this led so uh, i need to take the lens out of this led means i just need to cut the lens so i just hold uh, hold it hold the led and then take a hacksaw blade and just uh, just cut the lens out so it uh, looks like this so the edges may be uh, so this edge from where it is cut it may be rough so what i do is that i have this file and i just file it up so it may not be very smooth or you cannot see uh, the things properly so it is just like this so it may not be very smooth but uh, it's okay because uh, ultimately you want to just diverge the ray and even if it is not perfect it's good means you will get a result so as i said i wanted to make the uh, as i wanted to measure the optical output power output of the laser over a period of time how it is decreasing with temperature rise or how it is decreasing when the battery voltage is running down it's like once you are using the battery so it will drain its voltage and hence the output voltage of the battery will reduce over time and hence the brightness of the laser will also reduce so i wanted to measure that so by this way i can actually measure that using a photovoltaic cell which is also sensitive to visible uh, radiation uh, visible radiation 532 nanometer and that's it for now so in the next video i am planning to break open this laser and show the non linear phenomenon which happens like uh, 1064 nanometer changes down to 532 nanometer using this crystal and also i want to uh, want to explain like uh, how this uh, about a brief about this non linear optics till then thank you bye and that's it